Lily, thank you for being here at the FPA at Concordia Summit this year. Uh, we're really talking about your company, Cultural Intel. I want to drill down, first of all, what is it? Yeah, so it, it actually is a technology solution to what we have coined as the term cultural intelligence. So in today's fast-changing world that is highly diverse, highly connected, we need to understand culture to make better, faster, more effective decisions. So our mission is basically to empower every corporate leader with the cultural intelligence they need to stay relevant, drive innovation, and grow. So you can do that in a very consultant way or marketing way or actually bring the power of numbers and data to make decisions and that's how Culture Intel came to be. So in a nutshell, we are able to take every open source digital comment that is available everywhere, not just social media, comments in uh, newspaper.com, e-commerce e -re e review sites, and take that to analyze with our AI how people's public opinion really sounds like and looks like. And it's basically getting insight when nobody's asking. So this, you know, not like polls and surveys that you kind of have to answer something. We mine the voice of the people for intelligence. And to us, that is arguably one of the most authentic sources of insight and culture because it gives you the wisdom of the crowds. So that's what we do. What's the quintessential difference between old school traditional marketing and mm -hmm. survey taking, poll taking, and something like AI? So <clears throat> there is one thing I, I kind of say jokingly and the engineers don't like it. Um, it's that to me AI or AI power tools are going to become like what it was for all of us to learn Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and how to do an Excel table. Why do I say that so loosely? It's because AI is a means to an end, it's not the end itself. It's just a smarter way to analyze and draw conclusions from lots and lots of data. And that's unstructured big data. So what that allows you to do is to personalize your message. So traditional marketing was almost like, I'm gonna put, this, put out this killer advertising piece that is gonna reach everybody kind of like the atomic bomb style of marketing and hope that it really moves and shakes people versus today's technology landscape allows us to have one truth that is expressed 10 different ways for 10 different mindsets. So that's really where AI comes into play is the ability for me to very quickly process what motivates people and serve up content and messaging and solutions that are designed for you. Kind of like your wall on Facebook today uses AI to really put out what you are interested in, is evolving into that mindset for the way messaging gets served up to people. Well, that's certainly a lot of the pros, but you have to look yeah. at the dark side, right? As I like to joke often, AI is exactly that, artificial intelligence. Now that may be trying to reinsert my intelligence first into the forefront. Correct. But we've seen some, I would even call them debacles of late. Yeah. Talk about our fearfulness of this, of implicit bias, let's yeah. say, and how real is that? Is it a real danger? Is it a real threat? So um, if we continue on the, the AI discussion, I think we have, we're barely scratching the surface with how do you manage data as a new asset class? and who owns it. Um, I know there's a lot of innovators in the blockchain world that are trying to figure this out. How do you get to own your own people and make money out of volunteering or not your data? I think we're still ways from that. There's GDPR and other things that have come into play, but I think we're barely scratching the surface. So do I have all the answers? No, but as a company, we do have a commitment to use data for good so that we self-regulate, but unfortunately not everybody does. So there is that kind of like unspoken and clear thing that is out there that governments and private and public organizations are trying to figure out. Now, until we get that done, and, and I would really want to get this out, AI, again, is a means to an end, and artificial intelligence will never replace creative human intelligence. It does what you tell it to do, and one of the biggest differentiators for your beautiful brain and mine is the fact that we can create anything from scratch. AI needs to be trained to create something. 
So we shouldn't be afraid of it, just recognize it's just a new tool to get things done faster, and hopefully it makes us make better decisions. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, so much of my, of who I am, I guess, someone who likes to ask questions and learn and assume I know nothing, but also as someone who travels extensively, yes. right? Coming from an American culture, I like to say America has a habit of opening its mouth to switch feet, <laughs> especially when it comes to what we perceive we understand about yeah. other cultures. And there really has been nothing like the education of going to another country, Correct. not only to learn that culture, but I find almost by self-exposing your own inherent cultural bias or misperceptions. Yeah. Can AI take that into account and help educate and reform in any way? You know, there's been um, the attempt to many interventions um, to solve that and use technology for de-biasing processes or environments. So just to even, without the AI for a second, what is an example of that is what happens at orchestras. So. Less than 30% of orchestra you know, participants were female at some point in the 70s and 80s. But then there was an intervention to say, how can, why don't we put the candidates that are auditioning behind the curtain and let the people listen to the music instead of looking at the candidate? When that happened, all of a sudden, the percentage of women musicians increased to 30%. And now, you know, it keeps rising up. So that's how you de-bias an environment. Because even if I train those musicians who are the judges, selecting committee, to be inclusive and understand that diversity is important, you unconsciously default to making decisions through the lens of your cultural context. That curtain version, tech-enabled, is, is a gold mine for anyone out there in the startup community to figure out for talent recruitment, for how startups are funded or not, because women tend to get three to five percent of venture capital and angel funding only. Um, but we haven't figured it out. So here, free advice for anyone watching is, we gotta crack this one. And I'm hoping technology can help us de-bias because changing humans belief system is the hardest thing to do so we must achieve this by design and not by preaching um, and that is something that a dear professor of mine that I want to give her all the credit at the Harvard Kennedy School it is Bonnet who has written a book ex exactly that is like how do we achieve equity by design and not by training people more um, I invite everyone get great plug here for Erie's work uh, but I, I happen to um, be close to her and watch a lot of the work and I consider her a mentor and it's by design that we will debias the environment more so than the people. It's hard to change people. <laughs> it is indeed. Well Lily thank you so much for thank leading the so way much. and thank you for being here at the FBA booth at the Concordia. Okay.